Here we are at the last stop in our journey. We've traveled and picked up all these tickets for the circus. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, then you skipped ahead. Go back and watch the previous ones in order. I actually named them part one, two, three, four, five. So follow it. Anyways, the end of the journey, remember we collected all these little tickets, these NADH molecules, and the electron transport chain took these molecules and helped us to basically pack a bunch of protons into the intermembrane space into the intermembrane space. So here we are, zoomed up close. These are all these protons packed into the intermembrane space over here. And what we're basically gonna do, we did all of that so we can just take them out of the intermembrane space. What a waste. But this is actually what we've been waiting for. And uh, we'll talk about these words in a second. But this is easy. Now, all these protons, this is a concentration gradient, right? It's high over here, it's low over here. Take a look at what happens. Now that they're really high over here, they just come back out by diffusion, by diffusion. Previously, we had to use the energy from electron movement to put these guys into here, but then now they just flow back out. But we control the direction that they flow, and they flow actually through an enzyme called ATP synthase. How appropriate, that sounds like synthesis of ATP and it's an enzyme ASC. So this enzyme ATP synthase makes ATP using ADP and inorganic phosphate and the way that it does that is it actually uses the energy from the flowing of protons down their concentration gradient. So here it is. Protons will diffuse down a concentration gradient from the intermembrane space into the matrix and this movement we think there's some cool little rotational uh, movement in this particular enzyme, this protein, the structure of this of this ATP synthase, um, kind of like a turnstile in a subway. So these things move through, and it actually allows ADP. It gives enough energy for ADP to get converted into ATP, and this is the currency of energy that we use. And it has to be ATP because that's what our cells respond to. We respond to ATP. I cannot move my muscles. I cannot move my muscles unless an ATP molecule is attached to the heads of the myosin filaments, those of you who understand a little bit about, about muscle contraction. But ATP is the molecule. We can't attach protons to that. We can't attach electrons. We can't just make electrons move there. But we need to do all of that in order to make ATP because ATP is the currency of energy and that's what our body recognizes so all this just to make ATP and um, that's basically it but if you go back and actually summarize everything so the last thing I'll give you is the summary um, the NADH when it drops it off it people have calculated all of this and the electrons that it drops off coupled with the number of carriers and the number of protons that go through actually helps to produce that's why we've calculated that NADH will yield approximately three ATP molecules, whereas FADH will only yield two ATP molecules. So make sure you know what you're looking at. So this ADP is phosphorylated to ATP using energy from oxidation. So NADH, you can see back here when it drops off this stuff, this is now NADH is being oxidized, right? We're removing hydrogens and removing electrons. So this is being oxidized. That's why we call this, you should definitely write this down, oxidative phosphorylation. Each stage had a fancy name like that. So this one's called oxidative phosphorylation. It's oxidative because, well, it just disappeared, because these NADHs are being oxidized. It's called phosphorylation because we are phosphorylating or adding a phosphate to ADP, which makes it ATP. It all makes so much sense. And one more final word just to really mess you up. Chemiosmosis is the process we're demonstrating here. Uh, osmosis, it sounds like you know, things moving from one place to another, right? You know osmosis in terms of water. Chemiosmosis in terms of chemicals moving. I don't know, I'm making this up for myself, but it helps me. I think of uh, electrons moving to make protons move into a space, and as they move and flow around, that helps me to chemically produce ATP. So it is the coupling of ATP synthesis to electron transport. Okay, now rather than making a final summary video, I'm just going to connect it onto this. So actually, let's go back, and this is the really rewarding part. So if we take a look at everything that's happened here, the overall summary of cellular respiration is that we had these four stages, glycolysis, which happens in the cytoplasm, link reaction, 
when we come into the matrix of the mitochondria, the Krebs cycle, also in the matrix, the electron transport chain took place on the inner membrane of the mitochondria. Okay, so let's, if we add up all of this stuff here, so glucose gets split initially into two pyruvates, this whole process gave us uh, an ATP molecule here and an NADH, an ATP and an NADH. If you go back to the original video, I summarize this as two ATP and two NADH, but remember that glucose gets split into two pyruvate molecules. That's why we're, I'm just separating it for each one of these. The link reaction gave us another ticket, an NADH, and the Krebs cycle was the main the main part of the circus. I got some a bunch of NADHs okay, for each pyruvate, so that's six total. Uh, I guess one old man came and gave me an old ratty tatty ticket that only yields two ATP in the end, and then there's that free ATP by the crazy lady with pink hair. And add all of this up, what do you get? Every NADH produces three ATP molecules. Every FADH2 is going to give me two ATP molecules, and I got a few free ATP molecules in the process. So take a look here. Um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 NADHs. 10 NADHs is going to give me times 3, 30 ATP. So I'm going to do this all in my head. So that's 30 ATP just from the NADHs. Then each FADH2 gave me 2. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4. Add that to my 30. I have 34, 35, 36, 37, 38. There you go. One glucose molecule when applied through this entire process will give me 38 ATP molecules versus only two if you only do anaerobic respiration. I picked my winner. I will choose anaerobic respiration any day. But if I had to choose the body of a sprinter or a long distance runner, I'd probably choose a sprinter because he looks pretty muscly and he's moving really fast. But he still has to breathe when he's doing regular stuff like watching TV and things like that. Okay, that should overall summarize all of uh, cellular respiration. If you have any questions, I can't help you anymore. I can't talk anymore. Overall summary respiration, that's all. That's the higher level bits. There's some other things that will come up in a second, but that is the main overview of all of cellular respiration. I hope you've enjoyed that trip to the circus and see you next time.